Hello everyone. Let's take a look at how you can solve questions related to Fourier transform graphically. Many a times a question based on LDI system or Fourier transform on the face of it might look very daunting. But if you use the properties of Fourier transform and try to visualize the Fourier transform graphically, you'll be able to solve these questions in a very simple and direct way. So let's take an example. Say you have a linear time invariant system, an LTI system, whose impulse response is given to you as 2 cos 4 pi t into sine pi t upon pi t. So you've got an LTI system whose impulse response is known. Now the question needs you to find the output yt for some given xt. So you need to find yt if xt is a signal like 1 plus cos pi t plus sine 4 pi t. Now we know that for an LTI system output is the convolution of the impulse response with the input. So if you did not know Fourier transform you would be trying to find convolution between this signal and this signal. But if you know the convolution property of Fourier transform, you would prefer to find, instead of convolution, the product of their respective Fourier transforms. This would be the Fourier transform of the output and then you would find the inverse Fourier transform of this y omega. So to do that, let us first find the Fourier transform of the impulse response that is also called the transfer function of this filter or this system h of omega. The reason we are taking this approach is because just looking at ht I can see that this is actually a product of two terms which I am very familiar with a cos function and a sinc function. Okay, So let us first try to find out h of omega. So let me define ht as a product of two functions. Let me call this as some g1t and this as g2t. Now I know by the multiplication property or modulation property of Fourier transform that if g1t and g2t are multiplied in time domain, this means that in frequency domain, This is a convolution of their respective Fourier transforms multiplied by 1 upon 2 pi. This is what is the multiplication or modulation property of Fourier transform. If this is what was ht, then this is what would be h of omega. And that is what we are trying to find. So the Fourier transform of g1t, that means 2 cos 4 pi t, is twice. I know what is the Fourier transform of cos pi t. These are two impulses situated at 4 pi and minus 4 pi means omega equal to 4 pi and minus 4 pi having a strength of pi. So pi delta omega plus 4 pi plus pi delta omega minus 4 pi. This is how it looks like. Minus 4 pi and plus 4 pi. each having a strength of pi but there is a factor 2 multiplied here. So actually they both have a factor of 2 pi multiplied here. How does the Fourier transform of G2 look like? Sin pi t upon pi t. We already know that this is a rectangular function. From minus pi to plus pi having a value of 1. This is how g2 omega looks like. So I can define it as rect omega upon 2 pi which is simply 1 when omega mod omega is less than equal to pi and 0 otherwise. 
So essentially what this means is that if these two were multiplied in the time domain, you would have to find convolution of these two functions. So looking at it graphically, if this is the Fourier transform of the first function, and this is the Fourier transform of the second function, that was sine pi t upon pi t, calling it g2 omega. Then if these are multiplied in time domain, their Fourier transforms need to be convolved. There is also a factor of 1 upon 2 pi outside. With this factor of 2 pi here, uh, I know that the strength, this, this 2 pi and this 2 pi would get cancelled and I would be left with 1 and 1. Basically what I did was, I have written 1 upon 2 pi convolution of 2 pi delta omega plus 4 pi plus 2 pi delta omega minus 4 pi, the first function, its convolution with its direct function. So this 2 pi and 2 pi have got cancelled. This is what we are left with. Now we know that when we try to find convolution of a function with an impulse, it simply means that that function will be moved to the location of that impulse. In other words, if ft is convolved with some delta t minus t naught, this gives us f t minus t naught. So that would mean convolution of g2 with the first impulse and convolution of g2 with the second impulse. This convolution would mean that this whole g2 is taken and situated at minus 4 pi. This is minus 5 pi and this is minus 3 pi. And then con convolution of g2 with this impulse would mean that g2 will be taken and placed at plus 4 pi. So, of course, the width is 2 pi, that means this is 3 pi and this is 5 pi. This is how h of omega would look like, such that this is 1. Now, graphically, we have found h of omega in a very simple way. Now, all we would need to do is, given any xt, given any input, just find its Fourier transform and multiply the respective Fourier transform with h of omega graphically. If xt is 1 plus cos pi t plus sine 4 pi t. Since Fourier transform is a linear transform, the Fourier transform of this entire term can be written as a summation of Fourier transform of these individual terms. So I'm not writing them mathematically, I'm directly drawing them graphically. So if I'm trying to sketch x of omega, the first term is the Fourier transform of 1, which I know is an impulse having a strength 2 pi. So I'll draw an impulse situated at 0 and it has a strength 2 pi. If I look at this second term, cos pi t. So we know that the Fourier transform of any cos omega naught t is a set of two impulses, each having a strength pi and situated at minus omega naught and omega naught. Now in this case, omega naught is pi. So you would have an impulse situated at pi and at minus pi, both having strength pi. Now I'm writing these because we are discussing this for the first time, but typically these are standard results and while solving a question graphically, you do not have to write these terms. You can directly sketch the Fourier spectrum. 
looking at the third term sin 4 pi t now the Fourier transform of a general sin omega naught t is also a set of two impulses situated at minus omega naught and plus omega naught but the strengths are the one at minus omega naught has a strength j pi and the one at omega naught has a strength minus j pi if this is 2 pi 3 pi 4 pi you would have an impulse here and because this is imaginary i'm showing it in black because uh, i'm trying to represent both real and imaginary values together in this Fourier spectrum because our interest right now is only in frequencies that are occupied by this particular signal so this is just for the purpose of visualization minus j pi and j pi this is how the Fourier transform of the signal xt looks like now in order to find the output of the system we need to multiply the Fourier transform of the input with that of the impulse response that was h omega we just found that h of omega would be something like this this is 3 pi and 5 pi and minus 3 pi and minus 5 pi now we know that the output y omega is a product of h omega and x of omega so when you multiply these two you can clearly see that the only term that would exist in the product of these two will be these two because everywhere else h of omega is zero so when you multiply you will only get something that looks like this And I know that if this is y omega, this is the Fourier transform of sine 4 pi t. That means if this is the input to this particular system having impulse response ht, the output is sine 4 pi t. If you had tried to find the convolution between this signal and the impulse response, that would have been computationally very complex. But if you sketch the Fourier spectrums of both the impulse response and the input and multiply them, you notice that this, the solution becomes very, very easy, very intuitive and concise. This is the advantage of using Fourier transform properties. Thank you.